So it is cold enough outside today to really get this baby really stoked up and get the fire really hot. There's one thing I've not done on my wood cook stove so far, and that is making candy on it. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. We're gonna be making a chocolate peanut butter fudge. So let's get started. Yeah, I got me a good heavy pan here. You want a good heavy one to make candy in. And I've got my candy thermometer right here. One thing you want to make sure is that the bottom of your candy thermometer is not touching the bottom of your pot because you'll get it you won't get an accurate read on it. So the first thing we're gonna do is I've got two thirds cup of evaporated milk. And I've got three cups of granulated sugar. And I've got three-fourths cup of butter. So I'm gonna stir this good. Let the butter melt. Let the sugar dissolve real good. We're gonna let this come to a boil. And we're gonna boil it till it gets to the softball stage, which is about 234 to 240. Um, since I've never made candy on my wood cook stove, I don't know how long this is gonna take. So it will be different than if you were making it on your, just your regular cook stove. But I was just really curious the difference I'm wanting to make some fudge. I'm wanting to try it here on my wood cook stove. I've cooked a lot of things on here, but I've not made candy on it yet. So this is a new one for me. Of course, when you're cooking on your wood cook stove, you gotta get you a good fire going. I remember my grandma, she'd get up early in the morning and I remember going there and washing her and she would uh, take the top off that wood cook stove and then she'd start putting a bunch of little kindling in there. And she'd get that fire going really good because she made biscuits and she'd have, a, she'd either have sausage or bacon or some kind of ham cooking on top. So she always come in and first thing she'd done, of course, now that was a lot of the way we heated the kitchen too in that part of the house was with that cook, wood cook stove. Then we had a different uh, wood heating stove in the other part of the house. So we stayed good and warm in that old farmhouse. And it was, it was a hundred year old farmhouse. So we also had an outhouse cause we didn't have no bathroom in there for a while. We took baths down at the creek in the summertime and wintertime we took them on the back porch till grandpa finally was able to build grandma a bathroom. And I'll never forget, she had the prettiest uh, old uh, fashioned bathtub back there with the, you know, the claw foot bathtub. And it was the prettiest thing. And I tell you what, if I had that thing right now, but I have no idea what happened to that thing. I'm sure it probably got thrown in the dumpster or something. You know, people just don't appreciate that stuff anymore. And it's gone with a lot of stuff. So anyways, we're gonna bring this up, let it come to a boil, like I said. And when it does, I'll bring it back and uh, we'll see how long it takes it to get up to a softball stage here on the wood cook stove. Okay, while our candy is coming up, starting to boil, I'm gonna get the peanut butter mixture that's we're gonna be putting in with our chocolate fudge. We're gonna get it ready. And I've just got a cup of peanut butter right here. I got this from Pampered Chef probably over 20 years ago. 
And it's, you can tell what it is. It's discolored. It's turned yellow. I'm telling you what, over 20 years, this is the best. And I got the smaller one, too. And I just love these things. I've got, uh, let's see, how much melted butter do I have? I think it's half a cup. Yeah, it's half a cup of melted butter, a cup of peanut butter. And I've got a cup of powdered sugar. And we're going to mix this up good. And this is going to be the, the peanut butter part of your peanut butter chocolate fudge. We're going to be having um, a Christmas dinner. The, all the lunch ladies and some of the custodians, custodians that work and help clean the cafeteria and help take care of the cafeteria, we're going to have a little bit of a, a Christmas get-together after we get everybody fed and uh, everything cleaned up tomorrow. So I'm going to make some fudge. I'm going to make them a little bit of chicken and dressing. And I'm going to make some, some teriyaki chicken wings. So there's our peanut butter part. Just stir it up real good. Get it mixed up real good. And I'm going to turn back around here and I'm going to stir my, uh, my bowl over here on top of the wood cook stove and make sure it's doing okay. Now, if y'all can see, it's starting to come up to a good boil. You can see around the side that it's boiling good. Now, it took longer here on my wood cook stove than it would on top of just regular stove. It took about 10 minutes to get it to boiling like this. But the temperature is coming up. I'm watching it. And I'm going to let it boil just like this. It's stirred every once in a while until it gets to about 234. This is the kind of bowl I was looking for. And like I said, it's, it's taking longer on my wood cook stove. And it took a good 15 minutes to get it up to this kind of a good rolling bowl. But I can tell you we're pretty close to the, to, uh, the 234 mark softball stage. So just as soon as we get there, I'll be taking it off the heat. Okay, we're there. And now, I've got it off my heat. Went ahead and uh, shut the stove down. I need to shut the bottom door. And I've got it up here on my trivet. That kind of help it to uh, get it off the heat a little bit. So now I'm gonna add 12 ounces semi-sweet chocolate chips. I'm going to get them melted real good. Y'all, I'm really excited about this. <laughs> this will be the first time making candy on the wood cook stove. Really excited. I think I may have to get the plum away from that heat. We'll move you down just a little bit. I'm just going to keep stirring this real good. I'm going to put in seven ounces of marshmallow fluff. And this jar I've got here is a 13 ounce. It's a larger jar, so I'm going to put just a little over a half. Now you can do this with regular marshmallows. If you don't have the marshmallow fluff, it'll work. But it calls for seven ounces. If I can get it out. I love marshmallow fluff. I don't eat it very often. In fact, I really don't buy it much until it gets around the holidays, to tell you the truth. Okay. Start stirring that. Get that mixed in good. Give it a little bit of 
elbow grease here. So for some reason, my camera shut off, but the only thing that y'all missed was me putting a teaspoon of vanilla in there and just stirring it up really good. And then we went to the peanut butter part, so y'all didn't miss much. But I'm going to tell you what happened. Okay. Ready? Mm-hmm. It's going. Okay. I got to tell y'all something funny. I don't know about y'all's phone, but this Android that I've got. Now, this happened to me and Mr. Brown out on the river. If my... if the phone gets too hot, it just shuts off, and that's what happened. I didn't really have it that close to the wood cook stove, but you've seen about where I had it, and uh, it just stopped. And when I went to turn it back on, it said that the phone was too hot, so I had to let it cool off. So anyways, we're going to finish our fudge. So, y'all remember the, the peanut butter mixture? What I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in here with my fudge before we pour it into... My 9 by 13 pan. And I'm not really just going to mix this in really, you know, a whole lot. But what I'm going to do is just kind of swirl it around in here. And uh, I know you think we'll do that after you pour it in there. But this is how we do it. We do it before we pour it in. Instead of just mixing it all in there. And then once you pour it in... It's going to go ahead and mix good, but i got to get this in my pan. So i got my 9 by 13 pan here with pull in it. <clears throat> I know Mr. Brown's going to want that spoon. So I'm going to start pouring this in here. It's already trying to set up on me. I hope that's not too dark. Y'all can't see it. So let me get this in here, get it all in my pan, and let me get it smoothed out. Then we'll be back and see what it looks like. Here we go, guys. Mr. Brown had to help me <laughs> scrape that. That's a heavy, heavy pot, and it was all I could do to hold it and then try to get all that fudge out of there. But there we go, and I'll tell you what I'm going to do with it. It needs to sit up for about two hours. So... You're going to go with me. We're going to take it on the back porch where it's cool out there. Okay, here we go. Now, y'all know, of course, it's a mess back here right now, but this, if y'all recognize this, this is my outdoor kitchen. And, let's see, it's 30-something degrees out here. But we're going to put our pan of fudge out here, and we're going to let it set up. <gasps> if I don't spill it before we get out here. Lori don't do good with one hand anymore. But anyway, there's our fudge. And here's some more. <laughs> this is some bark I made one day. It's got cranberries and nuts in it. It's really good. It's just almond bark. And out here is where I've been keeping my some of my chocolate chips out here. Because right now the house is getting too warm. It's getting too warm in there, and I'm not complaining about a warm house, believe me. But anyways, here it is. Let's let it set up for a while. And uh, after it sets up, we'll cut it up and we'll look at it. I like a fudge recipe that sets up good and, of course, tastes really good. I hope y'all give this recipe a try. It's really good. God bless everybody and Merry Christmas.